Hello and welcome back to Games Lounge with me, Sean Paul Johnston. This episode, we're right on the verge of E3 press conferences, so we're looking forward to that. We've actually got a whole discussion with myself and Kat. It's a little bit longer this episode, just because we're going through our predictions for the Nintendo Direct and also Sony and Microsoft's press conferences, so stay tuned for that later in the episode. We've also got a couple of special features this episode, trying something a little bit different. Let us know what you think about it in the comments, if you like it or not, and we'll see what we want to do going forward. Remember, we're an independent studio. This is all self-funded. We just do this because we love games and we want to give you guys something that you can watch that looks like it's professional quality. So we are constantly trying to improve this. And if there's any suggestions, any ideas, things you like or don't like, let us know in the comments below. With that all said and done, let's jump straight into our first section with Frank. He's going to tell you a little bit about what's been happening last month in gaming. Take it away, Frank. Hey. Hello, all you beautiful people out there. It's your boy Frank, and we're back again for Games Lounge. Now, May has been a beautiful and amazing top-notch month for gaming releases. Not only would we do some teases of stuff like Far Cry 5, but we got some beautiful games. Now, as you know, I typically play on a PlayStation VR, but I tried some flat games as well. Spent a little time with Prey. Now, it's a cool game. Not my favorite. Thought it was going to be a little more Bioshocky, but hey. Hey, what you gonna do? I had a whole bunch of fun with what was that game that came out for PlayStation VR? Do you guys remember? Oh, yeah, Far Point. Now, I spent so much time with that. I love the aim controller. I love shooting the guns. I love shooting the spiders. I love playing co op. Honestly, there's not enough great things that I can say about this game. If you own a PlayStation VR, you haven't checked it out already, definitely worth your time, worth your money. If you get it with the aim bundle, you're really only spending like 20 bucks. So, hey, I can turn that one down. Also, Bridge Crew came out and bridge crew was fantastic i'm still playing in that baby i jump into quick matches every now and again so if you got the game hop on in with your boy frank it's all a bunch of fun now it's mostly role playing feeds kind of like a new age board game but what you gonna do now rumors and new trailers came out destiny 2 now destiny 2 looks okay but the thing is i spent so much time with destiny 1 that i wanted destiny 2 to be a little bit fresher than what they seem to be handing out to us kind of looks like the same damn game with a couple little graphical upgrades and maybe a couple extra little here and there things and i know you're sticking to a certain formula bungee but what i need something a little different now i think they're gonna have matchmaking for raids which will be pretty cool but i was always able to find the group online so for those of you that couldn't do that that's gonna be a whole heck of a lot of fun because raids were pretty much the greatest thing that i ever ran into when i didn't play in that game now e3 is right around the corner we got a whole bunch of stuff coming up there and i'm extremely excited about it i'm sure they'll talk about it more on the channel in the future and mario kart 8 came out and i love that one i know they're talking about that one soon i hope you're having a good time with it i really haven't been playing my switch too much lately been sticking with the PlayStation VR for the most part. I think the only other game that I really got that was 2D uh, was Prey. I also thought about getting Human Fall Flat, which I'm sure a lot of you have not heard of and haven't checked out, but it's a really cool game. It's kind of like a physics puzzle where you play this little blob and you get to move its arms and legs, and it's a couch co-op game. It's, it's actually a whole lot of fun, but, but enough about that. We got a whole great month coming up ahead of us. Uh, uh, we got some uh, rumors about maybe a Sonic game coming out, which should be kind of cool. We got those Battlefront 2 rumors coming about. Maybe we got some great stuff coming there. You know, I can't wait to check it out. Now, as always, thank you guys. This is your boy Frank Mom signing out saying, hey, have a great day. That was Frank with a look back at the month in gaming. For more VR specific news, check out Frank's channel, PSVR Frank. Next up, we've got something pretty special with Sean in Tech Bytes. Game. It's 1982. Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan had just released in cinemas, Ozzy Osbourne was biting the heads off bats, and the Vectrex video game console made its way onto store shelves across the US. The Vectrex had several unique selling points. For one, it used futuristic vector graphics instead of raster-based pixel graphics where the image is made up of dots on the monitor. 
Vector graphics, on the other hand, use mathematically simulated lines, so no matter how much you zoom in or out, they look just as clean and sharp. Another was the all-in-one configuration. Jay Smith, the man in charge of seeing this product's success, teamed up with General Consumer Electronics on the condition that he used a larger monitor than originally intended. Why? Because GCE had already manufactured the popular Game Time. Game Time was a watch that had four games built into it. This was different from something like the Game & Watch from Nintendo, where it had a single game installed. So they went about using 9-inch CRT monitors and shoved it into a plastic body and made it look like a mini arcade cabinet. This was somewhat of a far cry from the original concept. Hardware designer John Ross conceived the idea to make use of a tiny 1-inch cathode ray tube. After meeting with Jay Smith, he was quite impressed, leading to the eventual meetup with General Consumer Electronics. It did so well to begin with, the Vectrex steadily increased in sales throughout 1983. So well, in fact, that Milton Bradley, the popular board game maker of The Game of Life, went ahead and bought GCE and joined the fray. This allowed the Vectrex to be sold in Europe, and there was also a co-branding agreement set up with Bandai to sell the console in Japan under the name Bandai Vectrex Kusokusen. It wasn't to last though due to the video game crash of 1983. All sales pertaining to electronic games plundered and with it the Vectrex short-lived promises of success. Milton Bradley took a massive loss in sales. The rest of the Vectrex stock was practically given away at poultry prices. In May 1984, Milton Bradley merged with Hasbro and the Vectrex was discontinued a few months later. During 1984 and beyond, it was barely going for $50, far less than its original $199 retail price. Such a shame too, as a sequel handheld console was in fact planned, which would make full use of a colour display. It's thought this fell through due to the prohibitive cost of implementing a colour display and Nintendo's upcoming Game Boy looming on the horizon. Not all is lost though. To this day, the Vectrex receives large homebrew support. In 1996, John Donzilla released Vector Vaders, and since then, many independent developers have continued to add to its library. Not to say that the original didn't have anything to offer, in fact, the Vectrex has a built-in game called Mindstorm. If you've ever played Asteroids, you know what to expect here. The tech behind the Vectrex, there was a CPU, a Motorola 68A09, clocked at 1.6 MHz. The RAM was 1 kilobit. The sound was a General Instrument AY38912. And the screen was a black and white 9 inch monitor. Nothing could behold the majesty of the Vectrex. At the time of release, it was a technological marvel, pretty much a mini arcade in your home. Its bottom control panel is outfitted with the controller alongside two designated ports for multiplayer and additional peripherals like a light pen and 3D imager that even preceded the Sega scope. The controller itself is an arcade style joystick with four buttons. Ingeniously, the shape of the controller is even designed so that the wiring coils around the joystick and fits back snugly into the bottom compartment when not in use. Very clever. There are many of those who grew up playing pixel-based games, a look most would associate with video games today. I ask you though to take a look at what this little, well, big console was trying to achieve. Vector graphics were rarely seen in the gaming devices, and despite its bulky nature now, it must have seemed super sleek back in the 80s thanks to its self-contained design. The potential was there for great success, who knows how the history of video games could have changed if Milton Bradley had released a vector graphic portable with a coloured screen at the time of the Game Boy. However, we all know how things panned out in the end. It may have failed commercially due to forces out with its own control, but as the homebrew scene proves, at the very least, the Vectrex is not forgotten. That was an awesome bit of video game history for you all there. Next up, Kat and Sean discuss their predictions for E3. So welcome back, this is our Chat with Kat section and as you guys know, we mentioned that last month we were going to be talking about E3. It's just around the corner when you watch this episode, it's literally days away so we're really looking forward to that, excited about it. 
We've got down some predictions or rumours about what's expected to come out from Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo and a couple of other ones from the other devs out there. So we're just going to go through them one by one and see what we think. Uh, Catch us going to give me some of her opinions on the games. We'll jump straight into it. We're going to start off with PlayStation 4. Cat, we've got a couple of games here for PlayStation 4 that we're expecting to see. I'll go through them and let me know what you think about them, if you're excited or not. So Will do. First one, probably the biggest one we've got is The Last of Us Part 2. I probably should have finished on this one. The yeah. Last of Us Part 2 <laughs> by Naughty Dog and directed by Neil Druckmann. Now, we obviously saw a glimpse of this last time. I think yeah. it was at the Sony conference, uh, the Sony experience. PlayStation experience. PlayStation experience. And they showed that the end, and that's where the girl, what, what was it? Ellie. Ellie was playing the guitar, and then Joel walked in. So, are you excited about this? <laughs> yes, I'm so excited, because the first Last of Us, anyone who's played it, you'll know it was fabulous. It was a major thing for PlayStation, actually having that. I was a massive Xbox 360 person at the time, and I considered actually mm. selling my 360. Yeah, I was like, should it. I trade it in just to get The Last of Us? Yeah, that's how much of a big deal it was. So that one's looking exciting. Though. It's going to be really exciting. It'll be a major, major thing for Sony. Yeah. I think I feel like they're going to finish with that. Though they did that PlayStation experience, they could start with it mm. as a really, really strong start. It's going to get some gameplay of it as well. Hands hopefully, on. hopefully yeah. we'll get some gameplay of that. Um, like this year, do you think it'll be a release this year? I don't know if it would be this year. I don't know. I don't. Know. I don't want to get my hopes up because they've got so many other things coming out this year already. Anyway. It well, would be a major thing though if they could do that. Moving on to some of the other ones then, the God of War 4. Now we did see this again, we saw this and we thought it was going to maybe be coming this year but it looks like the rumours are that it's delayed until 2018. Yeah. Though. So that's by Santa Monica Studios. But yeah, maybe, what is, what's your thing? Maybe March or something next year? March, yeah. I've heard all the previous God of War games were released in March so I'm thinking it would make sense if this one's been delayed hmm. March 2018 for a release for that yeah. and it was announced last year at E3 that was the opening with the orchestra yeah, where it yeah. just started off and everyone's really like what's well, this going to be yeah so I think everyone's really excited for that one um, I'm looking forward to it I've never played any of Scott 4 games because mm -hmm. I didn't have a PlayStation 3 so I'm looking forward to getting into that one this is my God of War uh, God of War look I'm going to say the game comes in my beard will be long enough and I'll be bald by that point uh, next game Bloodborne 2 from from software, from from software, from from so, software. Yeah, they're the developers, obviously, of the the Souls like, series, Soul series, the Dark Souls, and everything like that. And there is rumors. There's rumors that it may be either a brand new IP from from software or possibly a remaster. But there was some images uh, that I saw online where they were doing some tweets, and some of the pictures were of Bloodborne with a two in the center. Mm -hmm. And there was also the fact that there was a leaked thing on NeoGaf where it showed the release schedule for Sony at E3 this year. And it was on there, and then there was a cease and desist apparently sent out by Sony to take it off the list. Apparently, it was a mistake, but that's surely a big mistake to make. Either you've got a remaster in there, or you've got a game, and that's why you want it taken off. So we're probably going to get. Yeah, some everyone there. really enjoyed Bloodborne as well. Um, I didn't play it, but I've not played any of the mm. Dark Souls games either. Apparently, it was kind of a successor to those inspired by the Souls series games. So really, really difficult, dark. Mm really hard to do <laughs> frustrating moving on we've got death stranding by kojima productions again we've seen this uh, kojima showed it off at last e3 last it was e um, uh, Gil del Tor Gil del toro guillermo sorry guillermo it, del toro I'll fix that. We've got death stranding, but <laughs> guillermo del toro <laughs> and also had mads mikkelsen wasn't mads it? mikkelsen is going yeah. to be in it as well as norman reedus um of the walking dead who was going to be in kojima's previous silent hills game uh, but they've they've got him in this one instead there it was announced last year at e3 briefly by kojima himself this year mm -hmm. i think we will see some gameplay we should see some gameplay anyway hopefully with kojima actually yeah. doing the demo on stage i think that would be a really good what's, thing what's the name of the engine they're using for that again they're using that new engine did it oh. the kojima engine or something I can't remember. it's quite fancy but yeah that's looking great looks think, really good it, it, look, it's difficult with all these games and to actually see put some proper hands on what it's like in the game. Well, we like. don't know what this is even about. Yeah. There are actually... Some TVs floating in water. Yeah, there have been so many YouTube videos of people trying to take apart frame by frame mm. all of these small trailers and trying to make these connections. Honestly, some of the connections people are making, like um, that the baby represents... Kojima's projects <laughs> at Konami. His projects I know. It's <laughs> things like that. Or that the baby is Norman Reedus and 
Mads Mikkelsen's as evil guy trying to get on, honestly. Interesting. It's really, if it's Kojima, we know it's going to be a bit yeah. messed up. It'll be so. a full movie I'm for about six hours. And then one of the ones you're really looking forward to, Cat Detroit, the coming to you. Yeah, Quantic Dream. Shooting. Yeah, I'm really, I've been wanting this for a really long time since it was, I think it was just a tease actually mm. at the PlayStation conference a couple of years, years back. Ago, yeah. Yeah, so we saw a little bit, we've seen little bits and pieces about all the choices and everything because they obviously made Heavy Rain and Fahrenheit, Beyond Two Souls. So I want to see some gameplay. I want to get the release date and I want it to be this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So lots of cool stuff there. We'll probably see other things. There's obviously third party ones we'll go over in a second, multi-platform ones. Uh, moving on to PlayStation VR, only a couple of things in this one here. We've already seen Star Wars Battlefront 2 and there is rumoured VR content for that. And then Gran Turismo Sport by Polyphony Digital. We're obviously expecting to see more VR stuff. And more like. exclusives. They yeah. definitely need it. Yeah, we've got like Farpoint just come out and obviously we've had Resident Evil 7 at the start of the year. So yeah, it's about time we've got some new games from PlayStation 4, uh, PlayStation VR, sorry. So we should see more of that. Otherwise, it's kind of a bit dead in the water until it gets some more exclusives. Yeah. So let's move on to the Xbox and Xbox One and some of the rumours about Xbox Scorpio or, or Xbox Scorpio in general. First big one was we were hoping to see Halo 6 this year yeah. by 343 Industries, no. but they've said that they're not going to be shown at E3, so I'm not really sure they're going to do something separate, maybe they're going to do a separate event or we're going to see something afterwards, shortly afterwards, but that was a big one, I was surprised about that, they're not seeing that. Yeah, I thought that they would want to get that out there, trying to get kind of that fan base who love Halo, mm -hmm. if, especially if they're trying to kind of bring it back to yeah. where it used to be, that would make sense for them. To get a big thing and, like that on there. And with the Scorpio. And with the Scorpio as well. Release, you know, that's probably a big one that would sell it. Uh, well, moving on to the other games for that, before we come to the Scorpio itself, there's nothing much really to say about it. We've already had the reveal by Digital Foundry, mm. so there's nothing much to say more about the actual console itself. But we've got Forza Motor, Motorsport 7 by Turn 10. They showed off like the image that was shown off them testing the game, showing that it was up at full 4K, looking really nice with some special effects and everything. Again, until we see yeah. it, it's just another, kind of almost like a re, re, re It is. A, I, I get bored basket. when I see the Forza games. I can't be bored with them. But then again, I don't really care about yeah. car games at all. They always look really, really nice though. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's not a major thing. That will be a launch title, I think, for the Scorpio. Yeah. State of Decay 2 by Undead Labs. Yeah. Uh, that's another it's looking good. Game. It's yeah. another zombie game. And I'm quite sick of them, generally. Mm -hmm. But having seen sick the trailer for that... <laughs> It's like to undeath. I I actually think it looks like it reminds me a little bit of Left 4 Dead, but mm. maybe with a bit more story. And uh, there's going to be four player co op this time as yeah. well, which people are happy about. So we'll probably so, get a release date for that. Probably one of the big ones that seems to have been there for a while as well now is Sea of Thieves by Rare. Yeah, uh, it looked really good last year. It was yeah. one of the few that I thought from Microsoft's conference last year that actually did look really good. Mm. And hopefully, I think people have been waiting for that for quite some time now. Hopefully, release date for that. Didn't Phil Spencer? He was talking to one of the guys online. He'd done like a, an interview about the Scorpio itself, and I think he was saying he was at the studio testing it out, playing it at Rare Studio. And he said it's amazing, good fun, and I kind of trust Phil Spencer. He's a bit more of a gamer than a suit, so I'm kind of interested to see <laughs> what it turns out like. And I think we really need some like this on the Xbox as well. It Definitely. Seems to have lost a lot of exclusives, and we need some big games. Rare, you know, it's kind of been. Idling with some alright titles here and there, but this could be a big one for them, yeah. so excited about that. The Scorpio itself, there's nothing much really else there apart again from third party titles, but the big thing we're obviously hoping to see this year is the price and the release date for the Scorpio yes, itself. Definitely. It's gonna be Q4 this year, so for Christmas time it will be out. Mm. I had my theory. theory in this. I had my theory. Bear with me. I'm really into my horoscopes. So as a Libra. I'm October kind of time but towards the end of October we go into Scorpio territory I think that's when it'll be released within the month of Scorpio so from mm. the end of October to kind of towards the end of November I think which we said ties in with Black Friday and, and Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving yeah. so kind of Black Friday will be there it's the perfect time really to release something like that so that's it for the PlayStation 4 PlayStation VR and Xbox after the break, join us again. We're going to be going over what we're expecting to see from Nintendo this year on the Nintendo Switch, obviously, and also from some third-party multi-platform games. See you in a minute. If you love gaming, we think you'll love Gamify 24-7. That is Small Fry Unify's weekly gaming podcast. Check out on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and now we're also available on YouTube. Okay. 
let's move on to then. Let's move on to Nintendo. Nintendo, like uh, like Xbox, has got a couple of big things we're waiting to hear from. Uh, which you know, there's nothing much out there, so it's all lying on E3 to get some of this news. We'll go basically on the one we do know is coming is Super Mario Odyssey, which yeah. is going to be their highlight at the Nintendo Direct. It's going to be a di- direct their digital event. So it's yeah, really like last yeah. like last year and the year before, I think they did yeah. that as well, didn't they? It's kind of pre-recorded. Mm. I want them to bring the puppets back yeah. because I really like the, the, puppets, the puppets that year. <laughs> they can't do a Wattas one. So. I know. Oh. Yeah, I know. Oh. Uh, that was really cute though. They're doing more treehouse yeah. events this year as well, which were quite cute. So. In, in, in the treehouse events, we'll always get new games getting announced or mm-hmm. things getting shown off there that we never saw in the main events. So that's quite cool. I think the main, uh, that treehouse thing works really well. It's like a few days. Instead of just being that one conference and that's it, you've got that couple of days of the treehouse events it's nice to be able to drop in and out as well especially because it's hard to be able to find the time to sit down for two hours Mm. and just watch an entire conference especially when you're not in the right time zone as we know very well so yeah yeah, the treehouse events are quite cute because they're just Um, spread out and we'll no doubt see lots of hands-on for super mario odyssey yeah it's it's the focus we're possible rumours of Super Smash Bros. port now. We heard about this before the launch. Mm-hmm. Potential for that with the new characters uh, being in there and the new Amiibos. So hopefully we'll get that. Skyrim, we're obviously waiting for more details from Bethesda. Yeah, definitely going to get a release for that because that was yeah. kind of with the whole launch of the Switch. Everyone was really like, mm, should I get that? Should I not? Yeah. Is it just another Nintendo thing? But showing in the trailer people playing Skyrim mm-hmm. out and about, I think that's what got a lot of people more excited for third party support with this console, which is what Nintendo really, really need. So we will Is it going to be the remastered version that came out recently? Or is it going to be a kind of different port that's not quite as nice? Who knows? I'd love to see an Animal Crossing. Uh, obviously, we got the rubbish one last year. I'll ignore that. <laughs> full on Animal Crossing. I'd love concept. a new one. It'd be amazing, especially with the Switch portable. It'd be brilliant. Yeah, uh, great. Pokemon, Pokemon Stars by Pokemon Company. Again, we've seen rumours that it's going to be a, a redo of Moon and Sun. Uh, it's going to be them, be them companies. I think that'd be really successful. Well, Thinking about every year that they do a new Pokemon, yeah. and it does so, so, so well, I, I think it only makes sense for them to put one out on the Switch. But there is rumours and there's hints that what the Pokemon company is saying is that it's really difficult to make a game for it and stuff, blah, blah, blah. Not hard to programme, but make the game fit in with the type of console. But it's a portable. It's a portable and a home console. I so. get that, but at the same time, if you think about the 3DS Pokemon mm. titles, that works really well for the 3DS. Mm. I can understand because the Switch is portable, but you've kind of got to be able to do the whole Switch yeah. part of it. That's mm. what makes it different. Yeah. That's where they're going to have to, I think, expand their horizons a little Pokemon. bit. <laughs> anyway. Metroid Prime 4 uh, from Retro we're hoping to see some news from Retro this year we've not seen anything for a couple of years now since their last game which was Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze I think it was and yeah we've not really heard much we heard that Alexander Brandon who worked on Deus Ex he's a massive fan or like aficionado of uh, Metroid Prime himself and he's apparently went over to Retro and he's working on the music there he's a composer so Let's, let's move on to third party or multi-platform titles. We've got a couple here. Tons more, obviously, but we'll just go over some of the yeah. big ones. The ones that we kind of know are yeah, going to happen. Ones. Red Dead Redemption 2. Definitely, definitely. A lot of people are thinking this is going to be at the PlayStation conference, actually. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm excited for it, but I didn't really get into the first one that much. Everyone has told me I should have played for longer. So this is my chance, I think, to get mm. back in there with it. And I know we're going to see something from it because I think it's meant to be out this year. Yeah. yeah. We're going to need to see some more about that. Little fact for you, I actually was one of the testers on the original Red Dead Redemption. I tested it at Rockstar and had to play it through and everything. Cool game. So I've played the first one. So yeah, I think it'd be quite exciting to watch this one and have a shot of it and see what comes out and hopefully eventually get in all the machines. We've got Call of Duty World War Two by Activision. Call of Duty game. It is, but I do appreciate that they're trying to kind of mix it up a little bit, go back to the roots mm. and proper war game instead mm. of the last one was in space. Yeah. I didn't really hear much about that one, surprisingly. Mm. Yeah, I never really played it either. I played the VR set of it on PlayStation VR, did that mm-hmm. like a demo thing, but that was about it. Yeah, hopefully this one is a bit better because I'm I'm getting a bit sick of hearing about them. But obviously sick and tired of them. A lot of pl- lot of fans out there who really enjoy it. Ubisoft has got a few big games and mm-hmm. uh, they're coming up with some of their big franchises, Assassin's Creed, The Crew 2 and Far Cry 5, that's their big ones I think. 
Yeah, Far Cry again, looking at Red Dead Redemption 2, a Western mm. theme we've heard for that one. Yeah. So that's going to be all the rage, I think, after Westworld. Yeah, Westerns. Everyone's back into the Western thing here. There's the new zombie games. I'm, I'm never keen on the press conference, though, the Ubisoft one. I loathe. Is it Aisha Taylor? I loathe. I can't remember her name. The one from Friends. Yeah. Loathed it last year. It was so cringy because they are so good for the staging, yeah. like staged jokes that yeah. just fall flat it's it's just not good so i i, I don't want to see it i don't want them to do that again but mm. that seems to be their style there is apparently a unreleased ip that ubisoft's got available for the switch which we don't know about so interesting about interesting that. anyway moving on to the just two other ones that were kind of the end here potential for news on fallout 4 and doom on vr yeah, I think that those two, or especially Fallout 4 VR, could be something to do with the Scorpio. Mm -hmm. Because I feel, since we know all about the Scorpio's hardware and everything that's been revealed to us, they're going to have to pull some more out of the bag other than just the release date and some games that are going to come out for it. I think they're going to announce a partnership, possibly with Oculus or somebody, mm -hmm. for VR. Because we know that it's VR capable, there's just not a headset with it. Yeah. So we're going to hear some more about VR on that. And they're going to have to have some really good VR exclusives or just really good VR ports just to compete with the PSVR because we they'll know, we yeah. know, there's going to be some good ones from Sony. They have to have mm. good ones out there for PSVR before everyone kind of flounders. Yeah. So I think we're going to hear some more about VR from the Scorpio side of things. Fallout 4 VR could be one because that has been rumoured for a while now. Yeah. It'd be insane. So we'll wrap up just now then. I'm, I'm really excited about Shenmue 3. You guys know about this, I always talk about it. But we're hopefully going to finally see some gameplay hopefully because it's meant to be releasing this year so that's my big title that i'm looking forward to there's nothing much else that i'm really massively excited mm -hmm. about i'm looking forward to animal crossing metroid seeing what they're doing but apart from that you know it's all stuff we've kind of heard about or seen yourself cat what's if there's one title you could take away whether we've talked about it or not what do you want from this just year? one because we, we've talked about a few i've I've been, been excited i've been excited by lots of these um like detroit and last of us yeah. really really want to hear some more from them but one that we haven't mentioned, multi-platform, is Call of Cthulhu by Cyanide Studio. They are developing. Mm -hmm. I really want to get a release for that because I know it's coming out this year. They keep on hinting on Facebook, they're like, coming out this year. I love HP Lovecraft. And I loved the previous Call of Cthulhu game, Dark Corners of the Earth. Is it, really is it scary. Yeah. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> yes. Lovecraft yes, it is. is uh, Lovecraft was a gothic Victorian mm. horror writer whose stories I love. It's really eerie and mm. uncanny and aliens and just oh it's, it's scary, scary stuff. So the game's a lot to do with madness and things. You're yeah. it's investigating, dark, creepy. I'm looking forward to that. I want a release date for that. So I need that to happen this year because it was announced at E3 a few years ago and I need it now. Mm. So that's what I want. So there you have it. That's what we're expecting to see, rumoured to see and hoping to see at this year's E3 2017. Let us know what you're looking forward to more than anything from either of the big companies. Let us know in the comments. Uh, we'll give a shout out during the podcast or something as well because we'll probably be talking much more about this in Gamefire 27 on the run up to E3. And during E3, we're going to be here in the studio. Kat, unfortunately, can't join her because she's in America. I will be in but America. It's going to be myself, Anton and possibly Kirk here in the studio talking about the games when the conferences are on, seeing what's happening. And then after E3, we'll have our follow-up post-episode for Games Lounge Series 3. We'll have our episode where we talk about what actually did happen and what we're really excited about. So thanks for watching, guys. Coming up is the competition and uh, Connor's review. If you want a chance of winning the prizes here in this competition, head over to patreon.com forward slash smallfryunify, support us on Patreon, and you will have a chance at winning some of these cool, awesome prizes. Having not played an entry in the Mario Kart franchise since Mario Kart Wii, I felt with the inclusion of online racing, the formula had reached a plateau. My excitement began to feel drained and I haven't touched the genre since. I'm so glad that I gave Mario Kart 8 Deluxe a chance. There is something about this title that feels more refined and polished than the previous Mario Karts. Accessibility is the name of the game here. You can play with whichever characters, whichever 48 courses, and whichever modes you wish to your heart's content. Thank Arceus. There is nothing more annoying in racing games than being told you can't access certain tracks. 
the only thing you're locked from and consequently the only tangible reason to play is unlocking the various vehicle parts and trophies obtained from playing and winning races. You're allocated a sum of coins after completing each cup of four courses. However many coins you've collected by the end of each lap of each race, that's how many coins you'll be rewarded at the end. It's appreciated that you could come last in a cup, but still be rewarded for making an effort. This combined with four main speed levels and three computer difficulty levels goes a long way to proving how inviting Mario Kart is to anyone of any background. My final note on accessibility comes with the smart steering feature. Its function is to simply keep you on the track when you veer too wide. As a little experiment, I asked my grandparents to try the game out with this feature enabled and once again without it. With no prior gaming experience, they stated there was more fun to be had with it on than off. The feature everyone is raving over must be Auto Accelerate. Basically, you don't need to hold down the acceleration button anymore. I would wholly recommend it as it frees up your attention to the brake button. Important because it can be a pain to hold down both A and B at the same time to take corners. On top of regular races, there are five battle modes. Balloon Battle, throw items to pop enemies' balloons. Shine Thief, whoever holds the shine sprite the longest wins. Renegade Roundup, either capture other players or free your teammates to win. Bob Bomb Blast, balloon battle but with bombs. And finally Coin Runners, hold the most coins by the end of the time limit to win. They are all exceedingly fun, but I implore you to play them online to find the best challenge. Despite concerns with online stability, I was only disconnected the one time, managing to play 20 consecutive races with no lag or dropouts. It is quite a feat to not only have all these modes, but also include 48 race courses, all of which are extremely well designed. Shortcuts are pulled into the aesthetic design to such an extent that despite being in plain sight, I didn't realise half of them until my fourth or my fifth time through the course. Terrain can occasionally change, like in Grimble Volcano, whereby the floors give way to the lava underneath, adding a touch of variety to repeated laps. So, we have all these courses, characters and modes at our greedy disposal. Is there any major problems with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? For my playtime, no. Just small little things. Perhaps I'm spoiled by Super Smash Bros, but I wish that in Versus Race mode, you could pick out exactly which items can and cannot be used during a race to a greater and more flexible extent than provided. Other than that, there is nothing but good things to say. The graphical style takes on an almost Disney-like quality at this point. Everything from the track to the backdrops has a voluminous, tantalising feel and look. It's perfected to such an extent that I'm not sure how it can be improved going forward. The music is equally on a higher level and in my opinion, a noticeable improvement from previous games. On the menus, the tunes ramp up the instrumentation alongside the user interface to give this impression of gearing up for the big events. The music itself has more bombastic and excitable emotion infused, even during the courses. I still get a laugh out of the music speeding up during the third lap, so that it's almost incomprehensible. There's no point beating around the bush. Do you like Mario Kart? Do you have a Nintendo Switch? Are you 80 years old and have never played a video game? Well, don't I have the game for you? There is almost no one I can't recommend Mario Kart 8 Deluxe to, and that's one reason it is so successful. Admittedly, if you had an issue with going from 1st place to 10th due to a barrage of item attacks, your mind won't change here. Still, the coin system that improves your top speed adds a level of skill to the game, and if there is anything that my grandparents have taught me, it's that losing is just as fun as winning. Or at least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> if anything, I would love to see Mario Kart become Nintendo Kart. It's obvious that more franchises are being involved this time, such as Zelda and Animal Crossing. Come on Nintendo, it's time you pulled a Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Get all the beloved franchises involved and make an even bigger one for next time. Let us know what you thought of this review and your own impressions of the game in the comments below. Game.
Another great review from Connor there. Remember to leave your comments and questions in the field below. And the best way that you can support the show is to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And that's your lot for another show. I'm Lindsay Marie Silver, and on behalf of myself and the rest of the team, thanks for watching.